This is about. The Way I See It okay. with so Steve Reitmeister. So I'm getting at long-term investing is, has greatly changed. Well, I should. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. You know, we've been talking about various aspects of the Zacks Rank with Steve lately, and for those of you who may not already know, the Zacks Rank is our proprietary quantitative model which uses trends in earnings estimate revisions and EPS surprises to classify stocks into five groups, ranging from a strong buy to a strong sell. Beginning with this installment and over the next four editions of The Way I See It, Steve is going to be detailing the four factors behind the Zacks Rank. But before we get into that, I thought that it might be a good idea to bring Steve in here and just recap a bit as far as where we've been with the Zacks Rank and some of the previous installments that uh, yeah. we've uh, recorded here of the way I see it. So we started way back talking about Zacks Rank being wrong 44% right. of the time, which really kind of threw me. Yeah. Uh, but I guess then the positive news is that it doesn't detract from it being a powerful tool. Correct. Uh, yeah, uh, we want to set everyone's expectations properly because when they see that big headline number, 30% annual return since 1988, you start to get some lofty expectations of what that means, uh, whether, whether people expect us to be right 70, 80, 90% of the time or that we're going to be hitting home run stocks. So that piece about the Zacks rank is wrong 44% of the time was to properly align expectations. We're right 56% of the time, wrong 44% of the time, which is a decent win percentage, mm -hmm. and our winners are bigger than our losers, creating a 2.29% uh, monthly return. You compound that uh, every month in the year and it comes out to that 30% annualized return. So it, we get to 30% but perhaps in a different way than people expect. So now that we've set the expectations properly, so you know how does this whole thing work? You know, why are earnings estimates so powerful? So we have to start setting the story. The next piece is beating the pros at their own game. Right. The idea is that institutional investors, they have the most money to influence stock prices. No one's going to argue with that fact. Okay, So the trillions of dollars they manage, they can really come to bat and, and, and buy up millions of dollars of stock and move it. So we as individual investors, what you know, we, we want to understand what these institutional investors are doing, what motivates their buy, sell, and hold decisions. And if we understand that, perhaps we can beat them at their own game. Uh, and so in that piece, we kind of explore uh, how most institutional investors, they're classically trained, they've learned valuation models. Uh, most of them have to do with what is the future stream of earnings for a company and what am I willing to pay for that stock today based upon those earnings. We call those fair value models. Uh, and so with earnings estimates being such a big piece of that, uh, if their earnings estimates go up for a company, fair value will go up and the big money will chase those stocks. However, it takes them four to eight weeks to buy up those stocks, whereas you and I, we can go into our online brokerage account and buy up those shares within a minute. And that's the great advantage that individual investors have over the professionals. All right, so that, that, that covers that aspect. So then the next one, we were talking about how earnings estimates are created right. uh, and uh, talking a bit about how uh, company management and uh, brokerage analysts kind of work together in this dance uh, to create earnings estimates. And so you know, we went over all the definitions, what's an earnings estimate, what's the consensus estimate, what's an earnings estimate revision, how is it created, and all leading up to where we are today, which is you know, the, the factors of the Zacks rank and, and how it is that we rate these stocks a buy, sell, and hold. And I wish we had a drum roll for this because the, yeah. the tension, once again, is just mounting. Right. I can feel it here right in mm -hmm. the room. But yeah, that brings us to the four factors that go into comprising the Zacks rank. So how exactly is the Zacks rank created? Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to do a quick overview of the four factors uh, here today because, as you said, in the subsequent pieces, I'm going to go to each one in depth. So the, the quickie version on agreement is this is about the agreement uh, of the brokerage analyst on whether they think that earnings estimates are going up for a company or going down. So I'm just going to use the example of IBM. Uh, I do not own shares in IBM. I beat you to the punch this time. Yes, all right. Uh, and uh, let's say there's 19 analysts who are following the IBM. The highest form of agreement would be all 19 analysts revise their estimates upward for IBM. That would be terrific. The lowest form of agreement uh, that would create the lowest rating would be all 19 think that earnings estimates are going lower and they revise their estimates down. So that's the range of things in which uh, we, we find for agreement. Uh, next we have magnitude. As we can certainly understand, 
if earnings estimates increase by 50%, that's a lot more attractive than if they increase by 2%. So magnitude is how much did earnings estimates move up in terms of the uh, consensus. Now here again, it is about percentages. So therefore, a stock going from an earnings estimate of five cents to 10 cents, that's a 100% move, that's more powerful than going from $1 to $1.05. Same five cents, but a lot different in terms of the percentages. And, and that is about the magnitude of the move. Going back to the thing we just talked about, about institutions, obviously a 50 or 100% move in earnings estimate is gonna catapult the fair value models uh, for these stocks and, and their money will chase those companies. Uh, third, and I'll give you a little tip because uh, I'm going to go over in great detail here in a couple of weeks. The upside, this is my favorite of all the uh, of all the factors. The others are obvious. The others, most Wall Street pays attention to, but this is the one that I, they think they paid attention to the least and maybe has the greatest benefit. Um, the upside is that we measure the accuracy of all analysts and how effective they were at judging earnings estimates for companies in the past. It's fair to say that, it, that an analyst who was the best at predicting a company's estimates of the past is going to be all the more effective uh, than his peers in the future. So um, the upside is taking a look at the difference between the most accurate analysts for a stock and what the consensus or what the average of the analysts are saying. This is a great predictor of potential earning surprises, as you'll find in here, both positive surprises, ah, we want to be in that stock, and potentially negative surprises, oh, maybe I want to get rid of this stock before the earnings announcement comes out and I lose 10, 15, 20%. So that's the power of the uh, upside uh, factor. Uh, lastly, a surprise. We've spent uh, some time on this in the past uh, during earnings season, talking about companies that were more likely to surprise in the past or more likely to surprise in the future. So this element takes a look at the most recent quarter and not just whether they, they met, beat, or missed earnings, but the magnitude of how much they beat earnings. So a company that beat by 25% is more valuable than one that uh, beat it by 5%. And that's what surprise is taking a look at. All right, well, you've listed those one through four. Uh, you notice nothing gets by me. Yeah. Very perceptive when it comes to these things. So then safe to assume that uh, all four of these factors are equally important, or is there some descending order of importance going on here? Uh, you could say that the, the current order of importance that I have them up here is the relative order of importance. Now here again, each of them does play, does play a part, but agreement is the most powerful because uh, if everyone's agreeing that earnings estimates are looking brighter for a company, then the likelihood that it will have better earnings in the future are, are that much more increased. So it, it lowers the risk of guessing wrong on where earnings will be for companies. And that's why agreement uh, has the highest weighting uh, in the Zacks rank. How were these factors initially determined? Right. Uh, th this is the work of uh, Len Zacks, uh, PhD in mathematics, and uh, his time and attention was put into getting this system right. So he, he figured out in 1979 that earnings estimates was the key to future stock price movements. He sliced and diced the data a million ways to Sunday to find which of these elements had the most benefit. So he selected these four out. And then here again, their weightings and how they're measured, he spent the time and attention to do that. And I think that the, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, uh, given the 30% annualized return. And this is a computer model huh? that, uh, that works these out and, and, uh, and makes changes and, and uh, and stuff. There's not uh, an individual sitting there with a right. visor yeah. all night. We keep there. trying to find better and better ways of explaining that to people. Uh, you know, imagine if Len Zacks was sitting there every night uh, and trying to recalculate the numbers for 4,400 stocks by hand. Okay, the, that's just not going to happen. So th this is a quantitative computer model that uh, you know every day is rerun after the market closes. You know, given all the new inputs, all the new um, earnings estimates that are put out, all the new earnings announcements, and so on. And that is what uh, helps calculate on a nightly basis. So no, there is no individual or team of individuals <laughs> that is working on it. It is a computer model. Uh, and for those who think, oh, I'd rather have individuals do it, you know, wh why have a computer do it? Well, here again, the proof is in the pudding. Look at the results. And, and uh, because the system is, is focused on what does work and it doesn't have emotional ties to things that don't work. I was going to say, yeah, emotions and discipline. Uh, probably are the two most important factors that make this a valuable tool. And, and that's the consistency of the model. It cannot, it cannot be swayed by 
factors other than the ones that we know right. are effective in judging the future performance of stocks. So starting with the next installment, you're going to tackle which topic? Number we're going we're to talk about uh, agreement, go into it in great detail, and then we'll keep rolling through the uh, the next four. All right, we'll see if we can't get a drum roll in by that okay. time. You know, each night these four factors are recalculated, as we talked about just a moment ago, uh, for approximately 4,400 stocks, which you heard Steve mention, which is the universe covered by the brokerage analyst community. And these four measures are then combined into a composite score, which is then used to assign a Zach's rank. As I said earlier, in the upcoming four installments, we just talked about this a moment ago too, Steve is going to be tackling each of these in more detail. Each of these four factors that uh, comprise the Zach's rank. So we hope that you'll tune in for those next installments. You'll find them interesting and hopefully get some information you can apply to your own investing as well. With Steve, I'm Terry Rucolo.